That said, in 1982, they put out an album called Coda, which is the last of the outtakes they had that they had never put on other albums. And they basically put out uh, everything that was laying around, and this was the last bit of it. Right. And some of it's really cool. But as an album, it doesn't hang together as an album. It, it doesn't feel like a, a like a cohesive musical statement. Like this is what we meant to put out. This is this feels like odds and ends. Yeah. Right? So you get "We Are Gonna Groove," which was a uh, a really hot track from like the '69 Albert Hall era. They you would play that thing live, and that was a really hot track. And then you get, you know, things like Poor Tom, which is a somewhat acoustic thing that just, you, you understand why, you listen to it and you're like, okay, I understand why this didn't make the cut on any of the albums. It was recorded in 1970, it was intended for Zeppelin three, but it didn't make the cut. Right. And then you get the best version, in my opinion, of I Can't Quit You Baby, which is this massive sounding version that was done in like uh, an empty theater and you get the ambient sound of the drums. I Can't Quit You Baby on, on Coda is like one of the great John Bonham moments. And Jimmy Page is playing his ass off on this. But I think it's a sound check. Yeah, it was a sound check for a show at the Royal Albert Hall on January 9th, 1970. Right. And the Albert Hall gig does show them playing that. And I don't know if they're using the audio from this or the audio from the actual live footage. But it, it does sound very powerful. So Walter's walk is is absolutely forgettable, really, in my opinion. It's just a jam. It came out of a jam, and it's one of those things that they tried. And it, it, you know, there's a reason it didn't make an album, and until the end. And you know, it's it's an interesting thing to listen to, but it's 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 one of those tracks that you're probably going to forget shortly after you heard it. Ozone Baby's a little bit better. It has a, it has a hooky riff. Da, 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 da. It's a little bit hookier and it's a little bit better. Uh, I remember when this album came out, I thought it was one of the better tracks on this this album. It was um, intended for In Through the Outdoor, recorded in 1978 in Sweden in the studio owned by ABBA. Yep. <laughs> well, they they recorded all of In Through the Outdoor at the, at ABBA studio. Yeah, in Sweden. Ozone Baby's, you know, fairly good track considering it's on this album. Again, I don't know what what song it would have bumped off a different album, but uh, it was okay. And then you have Darlene. Similarly, this is another one that has a little bit of a hook. Uh, it's a little odd. The drums are good on this. It was also meant for Into the Outdoor. Yeah. And then you get into Bonzo's Mantra, which is a blending of Moby Dick with this thing that John Bonham was doing on, uh, what was it, steel steel drums or something like that? I know Jimmy Page put this track together and blended two Bonzo tracks, and it, it's in my opinion, it worked really well. It's better than Moby Dick by itself, and it's better than... It was recorded in 1976 at Mountain Studios in Montreux, Switzerland, with electronic effects later added by Jimmy Page. It's basically a drum orchestra by John Bonham and Page added like effects to it in the right. studio. And it, it's a nice track. I mean, it is, it is a, to me, this is a more interesting track than Moby Dick by itself. It doesn't have the riff though. No, it doesn't have the guitar riff, but for showing off Bonham, to me, it's better. Um, I, I like this track. I, I always thought it was, it was well, really well done. And then they close this up with Wearing and Tearing, which is kind of like a backwards version of Black Dog in some respects, the way it's sort of like put together. It's a really fun riff to play. It's it's like very similar to the kind of idea of like if you like took the Black Dog riff and turned it around. And they used to do this early on too. And it's a very high energy raucous track that I like that never really got enough sort of love. Interesting trivia is they plan to release this under the name of a fake band so it would not be judged as a Zeppelin song and could compete against the punk bands of the time that were popular. Yeah, that was never going to happen. It's it's so obviously Zeppelin when you hear it. (laughs) I mean, it's it's just like, 
first of all, how do you hide Robert Plant's voice? And, you know, <laughs> you know, but yeah, I like wearing and tearing. And when it's all said and done on this album, wearing and tearing and we're going to groove our strong tracks. I can't quit you. Baby's a great alternate version of that song. And the rest of it is like, you know, you know take it or leave it. It's up to the listener. <laughs> <laughs> 